I could really use that factory volume knob about now. In my previous videos, I went over the process of installing the 7-inch Atoto head unit into my 2013 Lamborghini Gallardo. While the backup camera is on a new level and everything is vastly improved, including having touchscreen, the biggest thing I missed about the factory head unit was the volume knob, so I knew I need to find a way to bring that back. I searched and found that folks have added USB volume knobs to aftermarket head units, like this one from Amazon. But this interferes with the ability to type on screen, and it would be a lot of work to get this type of volume knob installed with a factory finish. So to keep true to the geek part of Cruising Geek, I knew I need to go about this in my own custom electronics way. After more digging on the internet, I discovered that steering wheel controls are just a resistor ladder as shown in this diagram. Basically, the volume up and down buttons would act as a switch that allows a resistor to ground, where each button has a different resistor value, and the system can read that. With my head unit back on the bench, I tied a 10K resistor across the tip and sleeve of the SWC input. In the Setup Steering Wheel Audio Key from Settings, I could then assign this to the Audio Plus key. Success! Tapping the resistor now acts as pressing the button. While adding extra buttons to the head unit has now been solved, what we really need is a device that twists. I had a potentiometer on hand and was originally thinking of using that, but besides being quite large, it also has the disadvantage of having a stopping and ending point without any clicking increments. Upon looking a bit more, I realized a rotary encoder would work. This one I purchased from Amazon, and you can see next to the potentiometer that it is much smaller and will fit with no issues. Further, it infinitely spins, and each spin has a click, so it should be easy to translate one twisting click to one volume press. While the rotary encoder did come with this knob, I found it to be too bulky. I was thinking I'd need to machine one out of aluminum, but stumbled across one in my parts drawer that looks the part. One less thing to machine, The final piece to the puzzle is the microcontroller that will read the rotary encoder and convert the twist into button presses. For this project, I chose an Adreno Pro Micro, as it is small and not much processing power is needed for this project. I also wanted the USB port on the Arduino Pro Micro to be able to power the Arduino directly from the extra USB output on my head unit, as opposed to needing to wire a 12 volt to 5 volt buck module. Here is the wiring diagram I came up with for the Arduino, utilizing the rotary encoder, the resistors, and two MOSFETs to switch the resistors. The MOSFETs are needed to decouple the 12 volt signal of the head unit's buttons from the 5 volt Arduino circuit. Fortunately, I used to sell a custom electronics module designed that happens to have a separate MOSFET board with four independent MOSFETs, so this works perfectly for this application. Feel free to contact me if you need one for this project. Now I just need to finish wiring it all up. I have tons of footage of this process, including surface mount soldering and making connectors. If you'd be interested in seeing the full soldering tutorial for car and audio, please comment below. But for now, we'll zip through this montage to get to the final stage of this project. With the board completely wired, I moved on to coding. I downloaded the rotaryencoder.h library for Arduino and installed it in my libraries folder. I then wrote a test program using Visual Studio Code. The results were not ideal. The volume worked if I went slowly, but when twisting rapidly, you can see it is missing clicks. After more hours of debugging than I care to admit, the issue is that I needed to slow down the code as the head unit requires about 100 milliseconds of the resistor value before it recognizes it as an actual button press. I then added an accumulator in the code to count the rotary encoder so that it could go ahead of the button pressing. Now every twist is recognized perfectly and converted into volume presses. For anyone interested, the code and wiring diagram are hosted on my GitHub. 
A link is in the video description. Note that you're, you are uploading my code to the ProMicro. Make sure that after you click the upload button and the output window shows compiling complete and a port's mapping trying to upload that you quickly use the tweezers to press the reset button. Otherwise, the firmware may not load properly. With the Atoto out of the car, I added the USB wire zip tied in place, then zip tied the Arduino to the inside of the head unit with some anti-static foam underneath. After cutting the zip tie to length and screwing the rotary encoder into the fascia, I did a quick install off camera, and the result is amazing. For regulars of my channel, you may notice that while I had to redesign the faceplate to accept the rotary encoder, I also redesigned it to take the entire center area of the console. Here's the old one for reference, where you can see the vertical strips from the factory. This new design looks way better with the faceplate taking the entire area. This concludes my upgrade to the Atoto head unit, adding back the needed volume knob functionality to the car. If you like these types of install videos, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Godspeed.